back squatting, if your single one RM goes up, your running economy at 12 kilometers and at 14 kilometers per hour will increase. It would improve your aerobic capacity in VO2 max. Yes. Because you have to use less energy to go that fast. All from squatting more. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Garage Strength Podcast. Earl, we're live right now on Elite FTS, just so you know. Yeah. And I'm here with our three-time co-author, world champion of the year, king of the PA press, Earl Kunkel. I feel like I have a fourth title just sitting in the works. Just sitting there waiting? Just waiting. I think you do. Waiting for it to emerge. We we could add in like a head of marketing at Garage Strength. Oh, yeah. We could put that in I there. I think I have four projects going on right now. Like full-blown projects. One just Big started yesterday. Work. Two of them are giant ones. So basically first, like, and I think the easiest way for, for the audience to think about your job is like you had to come in and learn like, okay, this is the training system. And it's not the training system, but this is the training system for how things get executed with marketing. Yes. Like and I'm okay. still learning. Yeah, but, but this is this is the process of like I'm showing up to the weight room, I'm doing my mobility, then I'm warming up, then I'm getting into the lift one. And then I'm listening to four podcasts <laughs> a week, coming in to learn new things. But that's your work on the outside that's yeah. like, okay, I'm gonna study this. Sport. I'm reading three books yeah. concurrently. And then you gotta think about all these ideas while you really dial in on this is the goal. Yeah. And this is the process to just execute the process. That's it. And then now that you've done like, let's say 87% of that, maybe a little more. Yeah. That's, that's a good indication of now it's like, okay, Earl. So you've learned the process. Now you got to do the strategy. So one of the things that's learned started, strategy. one of the things that's coming up is <laughs> there's like the weekly stuff, right? Yeah. So you're going to deal with that. Like every week it becomes kind of normalized. You get 52 reps of it. Yeah. But then there's things that come up like once a month. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you only get 12 reps at this. So it's where one thing you're like, oh, I'm learning this. I'm getting it down. And then something comes up that's like just a task for that month or something like that. And you're like, oh, how do I do this again? And you have to like quick, like go through your brain. And then sometimes you don't have the recall because there's so much info. You're like learning quick. Yeah. Um, The first two weeks I was like fried and I. I think there's two reasons. One, like it's a career change, right? Like, and second, I was basically like off for two months. Well, it's, it's, yeah, I was going to say it's a career change. You were off. And then also anytime schedule gets disrupted, there's like a, there's like a two to three week lag. Yeah. Of like disruption of schedule. How am I going to fix my, my home life is changing. Meaning, meaning yeah, like yeah. your schedule at home. Like, okay, when am I leaving versus when do I get home versus when am I getting the kids? What days of the week? Or like days when, so like Reese is doing like parkour. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, yo, yeah. I got to leave at 3.15 to be at home at four to travel another 35 minutes to get him there to get back on. Like, I'll get on my phone and go on every app and yeah. be like, make sure certain things are done. Yeah. And it's like, all right, you have like 20 minutes left. Read this. Okay, Reese is done. Let's get back home. All right, let's clean up all my stuff. Yeah. And I still have to lift yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) The lifting should help you long term to just stay like more. Especially squatting. Yeah. Squatting. Squatting. I squatted. What kind of squats? Well, so currently what I'm doing, my leg power day, I back squat. I keep it simple. The only thing I sort of. Oscillate there is reps and sets. Okay. I don't get more fancier than it's a back squat. Um, I will squat on my athlete day too. Initially, I was front squatting. Now I am single leg squatting on that day. Okay, but I'm single leg squatting with a front squat currently. Like that was the switch I made after. Like because I went from a year ago, maybe like a hundred kilos. Like I started. Yeah. To I hit one sixty one. Like front squat, no, or back well, squat, single no, leg single squat, leg, single leg, single leg squat. I was trying to piece together yeah. single leg front squat, and so, I'm saying back squat, front squat. So the front squat I started at eighty percent. I'm like, I'm just gonna get reps, or fifty percent. I'm just gonna get reps. Okay, and at then 80. and then I'll add ten kilos the second week, and I, the third week I'll ramp it. Just okay. 
and but I'll do a minimal ramp. Like, can I hit a hundred? No problem, type of thing. So, what's it was the like, hardest thing you notice between the single leg front squat and the back squat? Um, like the single leg, normal single leg. I don't think I've gotten heavy enough to challenge the balance yet. Okay. The front rack, I feel it more in my lower back from a mobility standpoint, like right away at the lighter weights. Right. Um, that also could be cause I'm like he- deadlifting heavy too, even though that's like days removed. Like I, my he- deadlift day is Saturdays. I do it. Right. And it's the only lift I do on Saturdays cause Saturdays like yoga in the is morning. Is it always a traditional dead? No. So I started off, it was traditional. I built up, hit a lifetime PR just out of nowhere. Like, I mean, I pulled 243. Yeah. Which is heavy. Um, just side 550 for those in the Imperial. Yeah. And so I was like, I struggle off the ground. I, I just want to, I always like to say Imperial over. Is that what it's called? I think that's what it is. Yeah. All right. I like that Imperial, <laughs> like the Darth Vader, the Imperial March. Start. Boom, boom, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boom, boom, boom. You know, ah, oh, man. So it was all just normal. Yeah. And then it was like, you started seeing, so mainly started doing it because Julie likes to deadlift. So it was like, where is she the weakest? She struggles past the knee. She can't lock out. So I'm like, all right, we're going to do up. Uh, just throw a band on. We'll do accommodating resistance. Like, yeah. cause it's real easy. Like just stand on the band, do it. And I'm like, well, I struggle off the floor. I'm like, I'm going to do deficit, which maybe isn't the best. I think it's okay. So I put the two of those together. <laughs> I think for you off the floor. So wait, you're doing deficit. This is how it started. It okay. was banded deficit. Oh shit! Then we went to just banded, yeah, to just deficit, to then pulling normal. Okay. But I pulled like I think it was like two ten. I pulled a banded deficit for like a set of like nine. So that's interesting. Like something ridiculous. It's such an easy progress, or like um, it's such an easy way to periodize with like the variations. Like, yeah, you just take one thing away. I, I or use say, a part of it. This was a this was the one thing that sort of blew me away when I when I was at Elite FTS. I with thought Dave you were Tate. recording a podcast. I know we're recording it right now at this very moment. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but one of the biggest things that was like, wait, wait, really? Like when he explained how they periodized bodybuilding with John Meadows, I was like, that makes such sense. And it's like exactly what you said. Like, okay, so we would do like, let's say a bench press. Okay, well, bench press is like a good primer. It's not the best for lengthening the pecs, but it's pretty good. You know, you might do like 10 sets. Then in then in phase two, you know, now we're going to do now we're going to do dumbbell bench. And then in phase 3, okay, now we're going to get into dips, but it's like it was like a simple progression exactly how you just laid that out. Oh, man, that makes sense. Look, I learned the, my ideas come from the GSPD parabolic periodization, like yeah. my the way my brain like thinks through it. Yeah. So, kudos to you. I learned a lot. What was that? 2018, 2019. Yeah. It was like, when I came down like yeah. twice a week in yeah, the summer, it was a while. and would just like ask, and I was so curious about the variations. Like that was what I wanted because I believed full heartedly. That's why I got better at like I've never been a. In my mind, I'm not a good Olympic weightlifter, but I can snatch because I know how to move right. Yeah. Or I learned how to move right. You snatch more than most people have ever cleaned. Yes. I would say 97% of people. I like the seven today. 97% <laughs> of people have never cleaned more than 125. Yeah. And I've done 127. Yeah. And 126 in competition. <laughs> and I have video... I ha- I don't have video of the 126, but it's in a competition, so there's like a PDF. Yeah, yeah. But I have the 127, and it's I literally you I should may, react to that. I may pause in the hole for seven seconds. We should call that a freak of the week one time. Oh man, let's not. Now, do were that. you squatting when you did that? Yeah, I, my squat was pretty s- decent, but it wasn't what lifetime numbers. But I think it was a a confidence and speed type of way I could move. So I wanted to say something that was interesting is this week, um, Trevor Woolwine, so he just came back from a like a back injury, upper back injury, uh, and he's a guy that has clean and jerked like 335 in pounds, like 152, 153, in comp at nationals, snatched like 117, solid, and he's an 81, lighter guy. 
um, swimmer in college. So he came up to me and he's like, all right, you know, I'm getting my legs back under me. I want, I want to try and go 160 and 130. And he's like, do you think I can do that? And he's very technically sound. Like, I think you can do it. I think you understand technique. I think you're capable of doing that. And he goes, what is, what's the main thing that you would base this off of to get me to that point? And it was, I look at it and I go, okay, you have a, a, the easiest way to program is to say, what do you squat? Okay. It's almost like saying, what's your bench, right? Like you could judge a manhood of an individual by what do you bench? That's why I'm much more Dude, I'm manly so than you. I'm so much manlier than you are because my bench is so good. And you can run a marathon too. <laughs> Don't you forget that yeah. either. <laughs> but, but I am very less of a man when it comes to the bench. What was funny is <laughs> yeah, Trevor's looking at me and he's like, okay, so what does that mean? I was like, well, listen, you usually would take like, let's say 80% of your squat should be your clean and jerk. And that's just a starting point. And the funniest part was, I was like, we'd have somebody like, I was like, you know who Earl is, you know, and then obviously he knows Jake. I was like, Jake's best snatch was like 73% of his best uh, back squat. His best clean 176 was like, I think close to like 90%, something crazy. Well, yeah, 180 of, of 210. It was like 80, it's pretty high. Anyway, where I'm going with this, I I was thinking about you, and I'm like, <laughs> you basically were probably back squatting like 170, and you were, you were over there. Like so this is the crazy thing. The first time I snatched 125, I had yet to squat over 180. That's crazy. Had yet to back squat right. over 180 the first time I did it. That's now, granted, within a cycle or two, I think I hit 182 for like a, an easy double. Like smoked it. So... I'm trying to think about Trevor. Was, oh, wait, so 182, you hit 27 for a double. And I'm pretty sure I had... So that means 80% of that would be 150? Which is where I end up, where oh, my so clean and jerk yeah, ends up clean would be being eight, around. Yeah, okay. So with Trevor, it was, okay, if you want to do this, we need to push your back squat up to 210. And if you can back squat 210, dude, that's what's wild with Jake is that his PR back squat was 210. He snatched 45. For a normal athlete, it would be like 30 and 60 about around that, that time frame. If it was Haley, he would have to back squat like 227. If it was Junior, he'd have to back squat like 240. But then you can go down that, you know, you, yeah, can you, see you the, figure out the ratio for him specifically. Even And so even when we looked at it, like when he hit 52. Uh, at the time, his best was like 91 or something. And we were like, okay, this is like the ratio we can go off of using the back squat to determine what he needs to do in this time frame. And then it can give us like target for a goal. Like, okay, if Trevor can get back in shape to back squat 210, that's that should show us like he's capable. Whether or not he does it will remain to be seen, but he's capable. And to – if I – I never – said this because i don't communicate things when i like lift you know i never bugged you at all like yeah, yeah. the most asked like can i hang out while and take notes to like learn right um but i i was never one to like send videos i was bad at like saying hey what's I this got another story for you then but when i i hit the 127 two weeks later in that cycle i took 130 and had it overhead yeah and i hurt my wrist yeah yeah, yeah. and then i couldn't I struggled to catch like hundred kilo snatches yeah. and meathead Earl kept lifting instead of saying, yo, you have to stop. I, I will bet I, if I didn't break my wrist, I had a stress fracture or did something horrendous to it and just kept, going and kept it, training the whole time. Until it like calcified over. Yeah. yeah. And never stopped to the point where it, it probably impacted my technique for the like worse. For like the remainder of your career, probably. yeah. Well, I didn't start till I was a master's, pretty much too. Is it? It's, so this is a little off task, and I think this is whatever. We're talking about squatting, if you didn't know, yeah. and we're getting we're hinting at some of the things we want to talk around around bone density too. So here, here's one thing: is like if you looked at okay when you squat and you 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 put the you put the bar on your back, like dude. It just immediately forces you to have balls. Like, like, 
you deal you're dealing with like a stressful thing. Yeah, the deadlift doesn't make you do that. No, yeah, that's the thing. I, I, I do believe that. I think squat makes you a harder athlete. And what's interesting too is that if you watch chicks, they are always better at squatting right away. Like every girl that comes in here, they will never like maybe twice I've had girls say like can can I like put something on the bar and I'll be like like for their for where the, yeah. the pain point on their upper back and I'll be like no nah, we don't do that here. I bet every middle school boy that has come through and trained has asked to put like did Lincoln say anything when he started squatting? No, or did he know better? I I think too he was squatting so young that he just knew where to put it. Yeah, he like just by chance. I always call him the P word pad, um, <laughs> just for those out there. I had a, uh, and we would never allow it to happen. My best. One of my best buddies, I was in his wedding in college, his name's Steve. Uh, he used to, anytime someone was hurt, he goes, what, you got a case of MPH? I was like, what's that? <laughs> yeah. And it's my P word hurts and stuff like that. I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think Without like, question. I think what's interesting is like you learn how to be like tough from squatting. Yeah. As dumb as that sounds, like not to sound like a meathead football coach, but you learn how to be tough. But then what's interesting is then you have like this spectrum of stupid and then like you were stupid. Oh yeah. Without question. And like then you have somebody that you go all the way down to right now. Lincoln's got this wrist thing and it's like every time he throws shot, his wrist hurts. He, and it's, I think it's a ploy for us to buy him a, a wrist wrap for throwing because <laughs> all the older guys wear wrist wraps and we should get him one anyway. But it's like, I think you just want a wrist wrap. Your wrist doesn't actually hurt. You're just being a baby. Maybe not, but that, that's my theory. So then you go all the way down the spectrum to Lincoln's case of like, it's harder with younger athletes. Yeah, to it's like how trust what they're trust saying. What they're saying because, and then you go all the way up to the to the stupid aspect. Where so like, if Sam told you his wrist hurt, you'd be like, okay, okay what are yeah, we doing about it? Avoid this. And he sometimes behind the neck jerks bug him, so we do push presses, and it doesn't hurt anymore. So it's actually that's a good example because I trust him, and and my expectation is much higher. Um, and I understand that he knows. And the feedback is been much there. more worthwhile, way, too. Way more developed. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because it's like one of the things that I've done with Lincoln at this age, going back to the squat, is saying, okay, he's in sixth grade. I always struggled with pushing my squats in high school because I didn't like to squat. I, I, I was decent at it. I could do a lot of weight. I could do, you know, like 405 for reps. But I didn't like doing it. Meanwhile, I could rep 405 on bench at, at the same time. And he enjoyed it. Yeah. And it's like, for him, knowing that Caitlin and I both have longer legs, even Caitlin for her height has longer legs, it's like I have been brainwashing his body to realize he has to be good at squatting. And it's similar to Ryan McDonald. Okay. Is that even with those long-ass legs. Ryan's super upright. Yeah. If you can squat a lot, at an early age, it'll carry through. And if you have long legs and you can squat a, lo a lot, you're a freak. And that's where Nick Singleton comes into play. He could squat 500 for five when he was in ninth grade because we just – I was like, yo, we're going all in on squats, all in, so that we can essentially have eternity strength. By the time, eternity strength. Yeah, by I the like time that. you're a junior, it's like if you're hitting 500 for reps, we're good. It's like uh, – so Reese did the Frank Spellman. You got to make him squat more. Reese's technique, by the way, is absolute. I'm thinking about Reese, and I'm going, Sanderson would not even come close to doing this with a silver bar. I, like, it's really impressive. So Reese just turned nine. Yeah. Like, just turned nine. Okay, so he is a little, like, two months older than okay. Sanderson, I guess. Yeah. And to Dane's point, he moves pretty – for an – for his age, he probably moves exceptionally well. Yeah. For my standards, it's not good enough yet. You're stupid, though. Main, probably. <laughs> That's why I can't... If he's into it, I can't wait to not coach him. Oh, yeah. Can't yeah. wait not to if he's into it. Yeah, yeah. Just because I know who's going to be coaching him yeah, or where he would be. That takes out the stress of it. And then I can just be hands-off yeah, and just, just sell it, like, go and cheer. Yeah. I, I don't want to... I don't want to do it, but I like lifting with him. Like I like yeah, yeah, being down fun. there lifting. It is fun. Um, I think that's my like, but his 
third clean and jerk attempt. I have video of him like <laughs> crushing the clean, and he clarks it. He like he'll do this thing where he won't drop under. Yeah. So the attempts at what I think it was twenty four kilos. He hit twenty one, yeah. goes to twenty four. He can front squat forty three kilos. Yeah, it's just the drop and, under, and it's just like. So I I almost think like that, literally fifty percent. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I I think that that I mean that's just coordinating and, and what's crazy though is he can barely back squat like 10 percent more than that like 47 squat, 48 yeah, yeah i think that's just a an i would just keep having him back squat more yeah he's so much more upright when he front squats yeah it's, when he back squats like he almost like it's it. it's like he gumbies and loses tension at the bottom i think for a teaching tool i think front squats and zombie squats are probably the best teaching tool for for squatting and then you sort of pepper back and forth between okay. back squats and front squats and i think that i think they're just such a good it's such a good method to use to teach someone how to recruit their entire body it's the best thing that we can do in the weight room that's going to resemble in a young kid yeah like farm strength so with him too like when we were talking about variations with squats he has three squats he does he back squats he front squats and he single, he single leg squats yeah. i it doesn't need to be fancier than that. Right. Like, I mean, that's, I mean, that's basically, that's one thing that I'm starting to learn too, is like Lincoln. So Lincoln, Lincoln, we, we tested his vert and being in sixth grade, dude, he's got a very freaking good vertical, especially for, cause he's heavy. Um, and I think, so he just squatted 91 kilos for the first time, which is oh, 200 nice. pounds. He just hit that for the first time. And then, about 10 minutes later we and he's test. just into middle school too yeah, right yeah and then he vertical his vertical was 26 3 and it's oh like, wow okay it's higher than me i think right now no last time i tested i think i jumped like 23 inches at eight in the morning that's because you were tight yeah you hadn't warmed up yet you didn't run 6.7 miles like i did no that this is actually i drove i think 45 minutes so <laughs> <laughs> that's like, what's one one interesting thing that when we're talking about squat is that if you look at the squat and what it transfers to with uh let's say a vertical jump and then you look at how it transfers to just general movement i can't patterns. wait to talk to you about vertical jumps about eight weeks from now okay and then what's interesting yeah and anyway and then what's even crazier is when you look at a back squat in the research paper that we broke down yesterday that's going to be released out on peak strength on the the youtube channel is back squatting will increase if your single one rm goes up your running economy in a 12k and in 14 at, at 12 kilometers and at 14 kilometers per hour will increase so you could go out and essentially so run it, like a 10k it would improve your aerobic capacity in vo2 max yes because you have to use less energy to go that fast. Yeah. Is that like yeah, sort of essentially all from squatting more? How about and that? Not even really doing much else other than if you run three to four days a week and you add in well, back squats, like you get better at it. Peak strength. Yeah. Talk about going faster, right? Yes, dude. This the is, app. Yes. And if you want to go in runner, you know, back squat, yep. it's in there too. But the update. That's the thing. The update to peak strength and if you guys don't have peak strength yet head over to peak strength the google play store or the apple ios store the newest update and i hate that i'm saying this it's like the first time that i was like this is a high quality app that's the first time i was like this is it this we're, we're on the path that we're going there we are going it burns it, it Dude, cruises so quick now and everybody's noticing. Everybody's like, like, holy crap, dude. I think... Uh, it literally has a new engine. I'm going to... It just started to back squat 500 pounds. I shout him off out often, but Liquidarity said peak strength has been hitting its single leg squats and power cleans yeah. and is in that its was, realization that, phase. It's peaking. And it's peaking. That's awesome. And I was like... Uh, we love this. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Trevor even had a giggle and a smile out yeah. of it, too. It was wonderful. No, I think it's great. I think it's... I think the... Yeah, I, I think squatting makes you faster. Peak strength has been faster, squatting. Run more effectively, jump higher, everything. Hey, I want to talk about one thing around squatting and a little bit with longevity. We've been talking about young kids a lot and like some of the things we've been seeing. You've seen a lot of young kids turn into freak athletes around squatting and how much squatting has helped. 
40 times, throw distances, numbers lifted in weights, in competitions. Um, one of the things that I found out, I went and did my like a DECA scan where, once again, I'm 20% body fat, if you didn't know, with my abs showing. You're too. so stupid. That's yeah. not right. That's, not that's, what, that's what the, the DECA scan said. You should have done the bod pod. I would have wanted to see Yeah. It. So... I also got um, a bone density score out of this. Yeah, which I, I believe this one. Um, and it said I scored a 1.486 grams per centimeter squared bone mineral density and a Z score of 2.4 with a DECA scan. And then based off of my age, this is like top marks. Like I'm like, I think I'm 90. It was either 95th or 99. I forget. Yeah, top. But like 5%. Yeah, I'm. My bone density is like through the roof. And yeah. for those of you, like, if you don't know, I lift, started lifting garage strength probably, what, it's over a decade now. Yeah. Um, but I squat often, squat often. And this is going to pay off long term for me. Yeah. I think your boy, Peter Atia, that, like, yeah, yeah, that's the same. He, he has two things I think he says recently. You can't fake being strong and you can't fake your VO2 max. Right, like, right. you can't fake the two. Because it shows a long term commitment. That's the whole yeah. thing. Like, you can, you can have a, you can have a very quick, like, your blood work, you can alter pretty quickly based off of what you're eating for like two to three weeks prior to a blood work test. Um, and you can do the same thing. Uh, I mean, and I'm not saying you shouldn't get blood work done for longevity. You should. Um, but strength-wise and VO2 You can max, game the system a little bit more. Yeah, you can to a point. And that's the big thing with strength, with, with being able to jump with VO2 max. If you're looking at those three things, and strength has such a massive correlation over to bone density, um, it it's one of the the first treatment that they're starting to give people now with like osteoporosis is like, are you doing resistance training? Okay. Well, let's start there and see what happens. Yeah. Let's start with resistance training, get you on high dose vitamin D. Maybe we start to supplement some calcium and let's test you in six months, but you can't not do this. Otherwise there could be really bad problems long term. Like osteoporosis is horrible if you don't. Do so it. for our older audience out there, any, the younger audience yeah. too, like, Hey, Yes, this will help you with sports. Squatting is going to help you with sports. The variations in squatting are going to like help with your technique, maybe shore up some weak points in like your musculature or whatever, or even expose strengths. Yeah. Like you know, maybe you're not you're a long legger and the back squat isn't your jam, but you get on that single leg all of a sudden you and like it. you're dominating it, and it transfers out onto the field or the court or wherever you're playing pretty well. But from like a life cycle, like hey. At some point, you are never not an athlete, but maybe you're not a competitive in sports athlete now. Right. Now you're just like an ath like a life athlete. Like, hey, I still like to move. I still like to run. I still like to improve myself or work at myself. Squatting has this big payoff, like with bone density is one of them. Also, too, like self assurance. Like it's pretty badass. Like when you put like, I would say anything above 160, 150 kilos on your back. Yeah, your body is recognizing the tension that's the load it's recognizing the load and it has to adapt also when that happens what I, I, i'm fairly certain that your body triggers mechano growth factor which then one helps with protein synthesis but two also helps spike like okay we have to make sure our bones can handle this and what is so wild to me is that there's oodles of research done on resistance based training and bone density and that exact mechanism is the same reason why sometimes when people lift weights they get taller like there's zero evidence it doesn't stunt your growth there's zero evidence of stunting your growth right zero so let's just play this game if there's zero evidence that lifting stunts your growth and we know that bone density improves from resistance based training why do we have this like myth out there that it stunts your growth? You know why? Because the best weightlifters in the world are shorter. Are shorter. Yeah. Because it's just anatomically. Then, then, they'll, then like, they'll say that. And it's like, yo, you realize that the guys in the NFL, probably half of them started lifting when they were 11, yeah. 10 years old. Look at strongmen too. Like, Yeah, they're huge. It's like. 
They're essentially NBA sized people who decided to lift weights. The and I wanted to say this when I went to the NBA game when I saw the Sixers and Nuggets play. Yeah. These are at, like they're built like shit brick house athletes. Yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're lean and jacked. Yeah. It's just I play basketball. I train to play basketball. Right. If I decided to lift weights and be a I'd strong be man, I would mm-hmm. – they'd have that frame. And, I'd be half Thor. He was a he yeah. was a basketball player. And I was going to bring that up. Is like look at the island of Iceland. Like the average height's over six feet. Like these, these people are giants. It's literally in their culture – to start lifting when you're like seven, eight, nine years old, and they're all squatting, they're all doing these things, which in impacts their height. Let's react to a video of okay. a basketball. I believe it's a basketball player. Yeah, uh, it's a basketball player. So I think Lifton. Somto Cyril or Cyril is this dude's name, and, and so it's a Kentucky commit. commit right? Yeah. So so my understanding is that. Well, let's set it up for just the audio quick then, too. So this is a dude. So, well, he's probably going to be drafted. I think he's going to be a one-year. One and done? Yeah. And so Go make those bucks, kid. Yeah. So so what I see here is he's doing – think about if if you're on audio, if if you're listening, um, he's doing – he has a safety bar squat, 405 pounds. Actually, it's 415 because the safety bar is heavier. So he has a safety bar around his, his shoulders, four plates on each side, and he's in a single leg position in a hat field. So he's got his hands on boxes. Now, the single leg, the back leg is not on a single leg roller. The back leg is on a TRX suspension. So he's doing this. Um, he's getting down the bottom, gives a little pull from, from his hands, a little pull. It's almost like a skater squat. More. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A loaded skater, yes, skater I would squat. say a loaded skater squat with a little bit of of pressure from his back foot into the trx and he has a foam pad for like the tactile response like yeah we're I'm low that, enough how, yeah how, my how knee hit I go? and this dude I'm, it, from what i remember when we looked him up he's 610 610 so not short dude, that's heavy if you Super put that on heavy. your back right now and you went to do this even if you did half field calf raises think about this <laughs> lucas just did a 535 back squat or single leg squat legit legit yeah. no no safety squat I had him do Hatfield single leg squats heavy, and he only worked up to just just shy of six hundred. Yeah, it was like five sixty five. Yeah, but he and, doubled it though too. Like yeah, I'm just saying in comparison, and he's almost twenty nine, and this dude's yeah, this dude's seventeen, eighteen. And some of the comments were around like safety. Yeah, safety. Now just little perspective. There's a spotter on each side of the bar. I think that's the big thing. You gotta see. There's a spotter on each side of the bar. There's a spotter on the box. Yeah. And the other aspect here, I'm not saying that this is an extraordinarily safe exercise for him. I would rather he would do it maybe with the with the pins that he could just dump forward. But with the spotters there and with the guy at the box, there is a bit of a safety net. Now, I would like to get Samto's contact We'll send him a single leg roller so they, they could do this with a Hatfield, you know, a Hatfield single leg with a single leg roller, and I'd want to see if he could push it a little higher. Yeah, that would be awesome. As someone who recently failed a single leg squat and not having like I think you guys call like the prisoner the rack yeah, to yeah, like yeah. To dump it, I did have spotters on both sides. Yeah. All I did was like go down to the end range of motion and said, yo, can you guys just like both grab it? pick it up and then i just walked out it was one of the easiest fails ever all you have to do is communicate how that's going to go down yeah another thing is here is i'm assuming that this dude probably did 385 before this yeah and the coaches were like all right you're done he's like oh i want to try four plates and then they're like oh well we don't need to do four plates he's like yeah but i'm a 17 year old who's a savage i need this for the gram and the post it on x can we get it done and then they he convinced them so like I also just I think it's like important to realize like they probably discussed what was gonna happen. Uh huh. You know, like so and again, I think that's I think too sometimes as outsiders looking and commenting, you underestimate what le- not legit, but freak athletes actually can do. Yeah. Like sometimes I think about like myths you read about, like just anecdotal, like, you know, 
something you hear like around the table and you're like, that's BS. Like right, y- right. your alarm. But there's always a hint of truth in it too. Yeah. And what's crazy about cameras and technology, if you will, there's a little bit more substantiating of this craziness actually oh, yeah. Yeah. happening. Yeah. Um, I think that's what relates to what you were talking about this morning, how people get upset about our athletes. Oh yeah. And being on drugs or not. It's like they have direct access. They see what they're doing, but they can't accept the fact that they are clean. And yeah. It's like, dude, I think I genuinely think I've only ever trained one athlete who was using and he had retired from football and had severe back issues. I genuinely believe I've never coached a single other user and he was not competing anymore. He was just, and he ended up having like serious drug issues. And I'm not saying that drug users are that. Yeah. Uh, guys that use anabolic steroids or drug users. I don't care if they use this anabolic. was, this, this was one like instance. after, after his football career, he had massive amounts of back pain and he was using that to try and like medicate it himself and then went in down a bad route and now he's clean. Now he's back to being huge. And it's like, that's the only guy I could ever think of who would yeah. use it. So I, that's a little for, should I give everyone more context to yeah, yeah, maybe to that would be beneficial. One of the, I, I made the comment. I was like, I think one of the things people struggle with, with garage strength, right? Is the athletes are clean. They're tested clean. They're not just clean. They're tested clean. Like, it's not like, Oh, I'm clean. It's like, no, like, it's like go to USADA, go website. to USADA. You'll see it, when they're tested, how they did, like they're clean. And I think that as an audience, it's just, you know, someone watching something happen, like you, it's hard sometimes to accept that like a person can do that. Like no way right. type of mindset where if I was to go on an influence and they're like, I do steroids, I, I take stuff. It makes it easier. It's easier to say, Oh, they're able to do it because of this. Yeah. Like you Which could, in most cases, still like most of those guys are still training. Re- I'm not, yeah, I'm just, they still are training really hard. Yeah. And it's like saying, all right, yes, yeah, steroids will help. Yeah. I'm not going to sure. deny, it. but it's not a magic bullet. Yeah. Like it's not all of a sudden going to be this. It's and not going to, it's, gonna, not, a, it's <sighs> not, I think it's like the best way to say it is instead of, pinning like someone sees sam and they're like he's on drugs it's like or he's trained really hard five to six days a week he's gonna be 30 this year and he's done that since he was 12 yeah maybe that has something to do and with you're it. not here watching him come here at what and 10 like, literally every day five or every week five days a week since he was 12 you guys that are the naysayers yeah would last three months and then they would take a month off because they would feel they need a month yeah, off. Yeah, something tweaked. Yeah, my yeah. muscles are and sore. And it's just like that constant cycle where when you take that much time off, like, sorry, but you're not going to turn into a freak. Yeah. So, no. yeah. When he gets here at like 10 stretches. Yeah, before he even trains. Or even lifts, throws. throws. Yeah. Throws, lifts. So going into this lift, I think how we got off of the, the – how we got off We're talking track, about squatting. Yeah, this this is like – I I would have slightly more precaution personally, but I don't doubt that they discussed some means of safety yeah. here. So let's just take it easy. The other thing I'm curious about it is too, heavy dude. I don't I wouldn't how that much on my did back. the I would cry trunk come into play because he does way more reps on the one leg than he does on the other. So he's on his left leg now. That's two. I think he does one on the other leg, right? There's three. Yeah, so he hits a triple on his left leg. He goes on to his right leg, and I think it's only a single he hits here. I mean, I'll be honest, dude. I hate that bar after a certain amount of reps because I start to get lightheaded. And his abs are popping way more after that rep, too. Okay, so, so even there, let's just bring that up. He just did three reps on one side and one on the other. He probably told, like, they probably wanted him to do a triple. He's a stud athlete. Dude's going to be a first-round draft pick. And he was probably like, I can't do it. I know my body more than this. I'm done. Yeah. That's a safety That's a safety measure. And then my immediate thought is, I bet his vertical off his left leg is higher than off his right. Dude, <laughs> this huge vertical. I mean, this dude's touch point is probably 12 and a half feet. Yeah. So I sick. mean, it might even be higher than that, actually. So sick. Yeah. All right. 
Dane, you ready to do some freak of the week stuff? Yeah, let's let's check it out. Um, this is I have to give some context. This is gonna be uh, let me get the mouse over there too. Which way do I go? Did I I didn't make it yet? But it's Joel Harris. Why can't this just be simple? Does it go off the right or the left? We should go to the left. Go to the left. I'm not getting there. <laughs> it's not going. Let me try. Here, you do that while I t say who Joel Harris is. Uh, so Joel posted, here are some go. of the top highlights for myself. All right, you over? I'm good now. Look at that. See, Dane has to help my simpleness out. Um, it's the Marathon. Okay. So a uh, thousand kilograms super total. So a 105 snatch, 135 clean, 135 jerk, 230 squat, 160 bench, 235 deadlift, straight into what a 535 marathon. So that's some context. Wait, you you have to do all that stuff and then go run? Run a marathon, yeah. So he started off with a super total, Wait, like a super, a super total. Where is he doing this at? I don't know. This Probably is like, just for his own. Like, did he go run a marathon by himself? Probably in 535 after snatching 105, cleaning 135, jerking 135. Shut up. Squatting 230, benching 160, and deadlifting 235, and then 535. I don't know. We. I don't think we have. Oh, it went oh, over here. I, th I feel like I have to. So there, you're over there. Then just pull it over. Yeah. Oh, that hey, good was job, bro. You figured it out. Wait. Okay. So here's this. Oh, my goodness. Is this going to be all the lifts? Oh, that was super forward. That's okay. That's that 160 bench. Here's the. No, that was a snatch. Oh, he power cleaned it, too. Oh, it's a clean end jerk. Dude, do you realize squatting 230 before running like that is insane? What is so? Is this dude on Discord? Yeah, he posted this in there. That's like a Daniel Stahl deadlift. That's my favorite deadlift technique. It's With, like it's like not sumo, but sumo. All right, so there's definite video evidence of all the lifts. I don't think we're gonna get a five hour long video of him. We have video of him of running? running the marathon. I want to um, see how, like did he run the dude? I ran twenty one and a half miles by myself. Oh, wow, what? he ran it on a track, dude. You're insane. Yeah, we have an image. So he has the screenshot Stop it. of the of the track. What is it? I can't. You have the eagle eyes. I don't. So he has uh, time, five hours and 56 minutes. Jesus. 1.61. Holy. Well, I'm trying to figure this out. How do they. Can, Max heart rate, 165. 165. Dude, so he just ran on a track for five hours. Wait, no. This is a mile. A sub six minute mile. What? So what did he do? Run a sub six minute mile and then run the rest of the marathon? Uh this may be well, I think there's more to this. Hold on. We got another image. Okay, there's a five thirty four. All right, here's the marathon. On Polar. Polar's like the endurance. Like, dude, everybody loves that. Yeah, app. 535, 42.5. Dude, look how many calories that is. I don't know if I told you I ran 6.7 miles today. <laughs> 4,009, 5K calories. Jeepers. So his highest heart rate was at 180. 180. That's high. At some point, he was just like hating So he, he went on the track and ran a mile. This was back in... And granted, he did ask, does it have to be current stuff or recent? It, so any of you snoops out there, there is a date on it that okay. says this. he did this in 2021. So but when did he regardless, do When did he do the – or is that – that's He like, did the super total first. Okay, okay. So August 7th okay. does this super one kilogram okay. super total and goes and runs a marathon right after. Okay. And does it on an app. Doesn't sign up anywhere. And then there's this other image we have of a mile, but I think there's lifts that come with this. So, oh, this is the 666. 600-pound squat, dead, and a sub-six-minute mile. So I think we're going to see a 600-pound squat 
hold on. Where am I at? Did it go over? There we there go. go. All right. So this is deadlift. That didn't look too hard. It is sumo. Here's the squat. Dude, that's so heavy. And then he ran a sub six minute mile. Six <laughs> six minute miles are hard. Especially, Squatting six hundred pounds is ungodly hard. And this guy's like thick too. Yeah. We're not talking like so he's not even crossfit size. Like no, he's, he's like huge thrower size. Yeah. Dude, that's really, really impressive. And this is Joel Harry's Harris. It's Harry's on here. It's spelled H A R R I E S. So with a marathon, I feel like you have a new goal in, in life. No, I'm still going on my goal. What's your goal? The intercontinental title of marathons. <laughs> I want to run a marathon on every continent. All right. Except for Antarctica, like every living continent. Antarctica's so, not dead. It's a cold world I, out there. I just there, don't want to run down there. I want to. I, I did look at a Greenland run, but I've already got North America covered. So it'd yeah. be North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia. Yo, Oceania. you gotta, you gotta run um, the South America one. Do it in like Argentina, right? Is that where the Andes are at? So yeah. you're like at crazy elevation. I was thinking Lima. It's at elevation. Okay, they have a pretty good one. And um, I just get there like a week early. Isn't Kenya real high up too? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm probably going to run a marathon in like South Africa. I, I found one where the, they were like the temperature won't be unbearable. Well, you still have to go do hot yoga with me too. <laughs> I was at that live when you're like, oh, we have to go here. No, you have to go to this specific instructor because it's a specific Wait, where do flow. That? Where would we do Wait, it? Where did we talk about that? On the live Friday, oh, Key oh, started calling you right. out. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. I just happened yeah, to you be were there. The, you were in the box. I had it because I was doing my work and I had it up there like yeah. on the screen. I was like, I can do this. Yo, Joel Harry. That's impressive, dude. That's one of that's 100%. If you can back squat 600, you can deadlift 600, you can run a sub six minute mile. You are absolutely 100% freak of the week. Submit those freak of the week videos on discord or you could even dm us on instagram possibly and we'll, yeah we'll dms would be great too yeah. we, we we enjoy this it's um, crazy and i still can't get over how the one call out led to a whole nother freak of the week yeah that's good video i, I was pumped on that yeah right. i mean i i would say with mr harris they're like yeah it's that's cool you did six 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 but you, you still didn't deadlift 700 pounds oh dude <laughs> you're so flexing on him dude i wouldn't i would get killed by a 600 pound back yeah. back squat also killed. too i think you would get killed by a six sub six minute mile too so i that's where i wanted to do that i wanted to do like i know i can run like a 715 and I thought if we would do a video of like I trained for eight weeks to to run, a f based off what your VO what it's saying your VO two max is on yeah. your watch. Yeah, there's no reason you can't run a six minute sub six minute mile today. In my opinion, most I just, of the time it's just me being a bitch. Yeah, I don't think you've learned the I'm like close. hurt yet. Yeah, like how I'm it getting sucks. closer because I'm actually doing yeah threshold work. I've never done that stuff because. I mean, I've done it, but never consistently. Running, and this is like layman running yeah. long distances, not competitive. Yeah. It's like, it's more about getting to the end. Right. So you, the only thing that hurts really is the muscles. Right, right. Like the wind doesn't the heart. crush you yet. Yeah. Where it's like, yo, this is my competitive pace. Like it's going to hurt constantly. Right. Um, Let's do uh, overrated, underrated. Okay. I feel like I did this around uh, coaches for some reason. Oh, coaches that were fired. Football oh, coaches that football. were fired. Nice. Let's go. This may be old news by the time this yeah, comes out. Yeah, it'll be really old, but that's okay. Um, Pete Carroll, even though he wasn't fired, he got overrated, underrated. You know, he's an interesting guy because I think that he was one of the – I mean, he was the last coach, if I remember correctly, he was the last coach in New England before Bill Belichick and was there for like three years uh, and then got canned. 
eventually gets a job at USC where he t- tears it up, wins a couple national titles. I think he, had he existed in NIL era, oh. he would have stayed in the collegiate level and no one would even know who Nick Saban is because he ran. I mean, he was doing NIL stuff before it was legal. Yeah. And he's, That's why Reggie Bush lost his Heisman, yeah, which correct. give it back to him. Correct. Same thing, MLB. Give Pete Rose his Hall of Fame. One hundred percent. Like you're literally promoting you're clowns. clowns. It, like what's wrong with you? Yeah. You have no authority. Yeah. None. So Pete Carroll, I'd say, he has that stain, but he's an underrated coach. Dude was winning. Dude, I mean, even this year, like Geno Smith's a good QB, not amazing. Now, I do think he made some bad play calls in Super Bowls where the Seahawks blew it. Yeah, we got the Skittles for you. Yeah, that I think he he. It's interesting. I'm not give it to Marshawn. Yeah, I'm give it to Marshawn. I'm not a huge Pete Carroll fan, but I do think he's underrated. However, I just want to throw this little blurb in there. Marshawn Lynch has a really interesting uh, interview, and he's like one of my favorite football players, and he's like. He's like I, I I don't I don't I don't f around with Pete and I don't f around with Russell Wilson I don't I don't talk to them like they're not my guys and they never were my guys. Ironically, he loves Aaron Rodgers because when they played in college, uh, and he he talks about like stuff that Aaron Rodgers did for him. So that's like an interesting side note. But going yeah. back to Pete Carroll, I think he I do genuinely think he's an underrated coach. All right, next we'll go one. to the Hall of Fame. Another one who I believe got can Rob Rivera. Ron Rivera. Ron. Typo. I he <laughs> I, dude, you're coaching in Washington. There's somebody like <laughs> it's like you're you're, you're starting QBs, Taylor Heineke or Sam Howell. Like I, I mean, what the GMs have been trashed there. The, the franchise is a joke. He's not rated. It's not rateable. <laughs> you're not even on the board. No, it's like you feel better. <laughs> and I think he got fired. If I remember he was in Carolina, but like they were kind of bad too, weren't they? Were, not well, as well, bad as they have they, been. They won when he was there for a little bit. Like, is that when he had Cam Newton, or was that maybe? I can't remember the coaching timeline, but like, I don't as you know. can tell, I don't follow the NFL. Yeah, very closely. like I just think it's it's an unrateable position to be. All right, to be in Washington. I know you're gonna get this one wrong. Okay, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. Overrated, underrated. Under underrated severely, Bill Belichick. That's Bill Belichick. Talking. Underrated. People are so oh my goodness. ridiculously stupid. Listen to li- just hear me out on this. Okay. Here's a great example. You better say you better mention one team that's not the Patriots here for me to back you up. The Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, you listen to to DJ whine and complain and how Sirianni should be canned. Well, you know, then they then they make these excuses. Well, he lost his two his two coordinators. Okay, blah, blah, blah. It's hard to deal with losing coordinators. Okay, so you lost two coordinators, and they lost them back-to-back years. Okay, that, I get it. It's hard. However, you have a $250 million QB, Jalen Hurts, who's a savage. He's got two savage wide receivers. He's got a savage tight end. He's got a very solid running back and arguably a top-five offensive line in the history of the league. He still struggled to win the last – nine games of the season now what we forget and and people be like well the afc east at the time with belichick when he was in his heyday right buffalo sucked miami sucked new york was iffy here and there they sucked (laughs) part of the reason they sucked is because they were in the same division as new england where i'm going with this if you look at the coaching tree he's had probably a dozen Head coaches come out of his coaching tree, if not more. Like direct descendants. Matt Patricia sucked when he left. Okay, um, Bill O'Brien was decent in at Penn State when he was there before James Franklin. Sucked when he got to the NFL. Eric Mangini sucked. Charlie Weiss sucked. Romeo Cronell sucked. Josh McDaniel sucked. These were all their yeah, I was coordinators. Say his tree sucks. So these were all his coordinators, but he kept things stable. For from 2001 basically until 24, he kept it stable. It's so hard in a league. And then, on top of that, this is what pisses me off with Eagles fans you have to win, take out the AFC East, you still have to win in the playoffs. Then you still have to win the Super Bowl six times. You have to beat the like, and he didn't beat, dude, he beat Donovan McNabb 
in a loaded Eagles team in 04. He beat the Panthers, I think, in 03 or 05, if I remember correctly, the, the years. I feel like Panthers were 05. It might have been. McNabb's team was stacked. And they had Andy Reid, who's going possibly to win his third or fourth Yo. Super Bowl here. And he was their head coach. He's a good freaking head coach. Andy okay. Reid is great. So much better than Bill Belichick. Thank you for bringing him up. Oh, my God. Dude, come on. You give him Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey. His O-line again is stacked. Look what he did with the Eagles, though, too. Like, here's Tom the thing. Brady he had did it not one with one, wide but two receiver teams. who was good. Randy Moss. One. And it was for a year. I feel like he was two. Edelman's, like, upset at you right now. Okay, they were and good. And Amendola's mad, too. They were not on the level of, like, Dante. Uh, look at going back to Eagles. A.J. Brown. Dude, they good. were not on. Like, Edelman and Wes Welker might have been. Might have been. Do you know I have a Wes Welker jersey? I got it. Well, as, when he was in, with the Dolphins or the Patriots? No, when he was with the Patriots. I, I got it. Um, What size is it? I forget. I'll buy it off of you. Will you? Yes. It was a gift. 100% I would buy that off you. I got it as a gift for, uh, I was in a wedding party. Like my best buddy, like from five years old, like growing up, like essentially the first person's house I stayed over yeah. type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like in his wedding, he got us all NFL jerseys, like authentic. I, I will buy that off of you if you want to, if you want to part ways with it. We'll see what and happens. And I'll wear it. I still, I would wear it every now and then, but it's, it's, it's nice. I'll so, I'll show it to you Thursday. Going back to this, think about how challenging it is to be consistent with just being head of marketing. This dude was winning titles. Dude, if I had Tom Brady on my team, Shut, I mean, you, I wouldn't. I, I'd be incredible. You'd be incredible, but you still have to win six. No, that's why Andy Reid's better because, like, even when his quarterbacks aren't Patrick Matt Mahomes, Castle he's still good. Matt Castle was a starting quarterback, and they went like 11-5. and five. That dude oh. didn't even start in college, and everybody forgets that. One when year. When Tom Brady tore his ACL. Fluke. You guys are stupid. Let's go on to the next one. All right, either or. AFC or NFC? My, I'd probably go AFC. Okay. Yeah. Aren't the Niners in the NFC? Yeah. Ni NFC to me is always like the harder teams, like the like the tough guys. AFC is like the finesse. Yeah. I don't know if I really care. Yeah, I don't really care. I don't either. know if I'm rooting for – Super Bowl is probably going to be over by the time this comes out, right? Mm -hmm. I don't – who is it? Niners and Chiefs? I don't even know I think who the I want to root win. for. Chiefs. I, I think I want to root for the Chiefs just because of Taylor Swift. If Andy Reid – if Andy Reid wins another Super Bowl, I'm keeping the stash for three months. For three months? What, do you want nice. me to go longer? Yeah, why not? Like, do a half a year. Like, do a full, like, peak strength, peak date cycle. Like, you have to, like, <laughs> basically, right now, you're in the exposure phase of your mustache. You got to talk to Caitlin about that. What is it with wives and not liking mustaches? Like, oh, she you know, just thinks I look ridiculous. Exactly. That's her nice way of saying I hate it. <laughs> It's like, you know what it is? It's what I said to you this morning. Mustaches are peacock feathers. Yeah. Everyone looks. Yeah. And they don't want people looking at you. That's all it is. Everyone's <laughs> going to be looking at you. It doesn't matter. You laugh, but you know it's true. You, you're you going to catch so many side eyes, too. That's funny. And people are like, oh, I'm looking because it's funny. No, you're looking because you're curious. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's all it is to it. All right. We got to do some uh, audience questions. Discord. Join the Discord. Join the Reddit too. Yeah, I started getting active on the Reddit too. I don't think it, people on the Reddit yet know that I'm oh. on the Reddit. Okay, but I try to be helpful. I want to help people. Yeah, I like helping. I like being part of the community too. <laughs> That's good. Because what everyone forgets is like I'm an OG, like community person. Like I wasn't on site. Like I'm geographically close. Yeah, yeah. But I was not an on site person. Right. I was like one of when you got spreadsheets sent to you, like. <laughs> If peak strength existed when I started, like that's where I would have been. That's true. Just keeping that in mind. All right. This is King Ragnar. For someone who has a shoulder issue and can't do the Olympic lifts, what are the best alternatives to the Olympic lifts for power development? You can't do like high poles or clean poles? I don't know. It just said they can't do the Olympic lifts. I don't know if that means they can't do like, va weighted, like partial variations. Some weighted it. jumps, uh, Trap bar jumps with a little bit more of a hinge. Um, 
maybe heavier banded kettlebell for like sets of five repeat and then a lot of plyometric work big squats and a lot of plyometric work like even just like contrast training yeah squatting always works you yeah. never go wrong with squats yeah um this is from gold rush not after the gold rush yeah from neil young yeah dude neil young i will spend i would spend upwards of five hundred dollars to go see him live if crazy horse is with him oh that'd be great i may even i would even consider spending a, a ton now if it was with the promise of the real which is uh what's his name the country artist why can't i think of his name right now i went and saw him and Dude, he's gotta all be the like cops 78 came. willie nelson's son oh, yeah. lucas nelson's yeah. band the promise of the real will play as neil young's backup band and they still rock out he may be closer to 80 at this point. He's he's old. Anyway, who's the best garage strength athlete? <laughs> right now, probably Yaime. I think I think based off of athletic ability and like what she can do, she's probably the best Man, athlete. Man, I cannot wait until all the athletes hear about this, see this, listen to the podcast. No one's going to argue with that one. But still, I want them all to hear it. Yeah, and I, I'm trying to think about who. So Neil Young, 79. I'm trying to think about who else. I, yeah, I would still just stick with Yaime because she's the only thing that she lacks is she doesn't bench a lot. But like jerks, power clean, snatches, back squats, front squats, or jumps. She, I was bitching at her. I don't know if you guys could hear me yelling at her. She needed to jump. I don't to the speak top Spanish either. So three. yeah, I was just like screaming at her. And she just kept. I kept yelling at her. She she was jumping to the the top of the steps in four, and that she had to get three. And she kept telling me that my mustache was ugly. She actually thought it was a fake mustache the first day she thought it. <laughs> like she was literally like the next day she asked me if my bigote is real. <laughs> That's all we got. All right. So make sure if you guys want to operate at high speeds and get that brand new motor that you just built out with that global innervation from squatting way more. Head over to peakstrength.app because we just entered a big time speed adaptation into Peak Strength, our freaking strength training app that is absolutely phenomenal. Head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store. Peace.